What is going on YouTube? It's the Middle School Math Man. This video is going to be on inverse variation. Last class we talked about direct variation. Um, this video is going to be on inverse variation. So before we get started, um, inverse variation is just a set of ordered pairs where there is a constant uh, product. So that product is going to be x times y. So when we are trying to find k, we're trying to find the constant. With direct variation, we did y divided by x. So now we have inverse variation, so it's going to be x times y. Also, my equation, for my equation, we're going to have y equals k over x. So basically the opposite or the inverse of direct variation. So keeping those things in mind, we are going to look at a couple different types of problems. So going back to the first type, I could ask you to identify the constant. That's a very basic thing to do. So my constant, like we just mentioned, is going to be x times y. That's how we're going to find it. So let's go back. So here I have 2 times 12. I have 3 times 8, and I have 4 times 6. Now those all equal the same thing when you multiply, and that's 24. So my constant is 24. Now the equation, like we just talked about, is y equals k over x. So the constant is k. That's what we just found. So my equation is y equals 24 over x. Now looking at number 2, we have negative 4 times 3.5. We have negative 2 times 7. And we have negative 1 times 14. Now obviously all those multiply together to be negative 14. So that's my constant. My equation is just going to be y equals negative 14 over x. So fairly straightforward. Uh, if you want to pause the video and try 3 and 4, that's what I would suggest. So number 3, we have negative 2 times 18, negative 4 times 9, and 6 times negative 6. All of those multiply to negative 36. So that's my constant. My equation is just y equals k over x. So y equals negative 36 over x. Last one, 0.5 times 20, 1 times 10, 2 times 5, all of those multiply to 10. So my equation is y equals 10 over x. Next type of thing I could ask you, <clears throat> I could give you a graph, and I am telling you that the constant of variation is 18. So just like we did over here, we found the constant, and we multiplied x times y together, now I'm telling you that k, that 18, is the constant, k. And we found it by doing x times y. So let's make a table. We're actually going to make two tables. And you're going to see y in a second. So let's think about all the numbers that multiply together to give us 18, because we're doing x times y, right? So 1 times 18. Let's see, we have 2 times 9, 3 times 6, on the other side we have, let's see, 6 times 3, we have 9 times 2, we have 18 times 1, so those are all the ways we can multiply to get us 18. You might be thinking, where is this other table? coming from, like what are the numbers, those are all the ways to multiply to 18. But, as you know, two negative numbers multiplied together also give us positive 18. So, negative 1 times negative 18 is 18. So this is just going to be the same numbers, except they're both going to be negative. <clears throat> now, if we were to graph both of these, that's what I'm going to do now. So we're going to have 1, 18, going to be up there, 2, 9, three, six, six, three, nine, two, and let's see, 18, 
1 is going to be there. So, this is going to be hard to do with my stylus here, but that line or those points are going to look something like that. Now if we do it with the other table, you should be able to tell that that's going to be in the third quadrant. So negative 1, negative 18 is going to be down there. Negative 2, negative 9 is going to be there. Negative 3, negative 6. <coughs> negative 9, negative 2. And then negative 18, negative 1. So, they look very similar, um, and they should. They're just on opposite quadrants. So anytime you have an inverse variation, the graph is going to look something like that. Now it might be in different quadrants and so on and so forth, but we're going to have two different lines, if you want to call them that, um, because there is going to be two different ways that you can multiply together to give you that constant. Just like with direct variation, um, I could also uh, make you solve for a missing value. So with direct variation, when we were finding k, we did y over x. So when we came to these proportions, we had y over x equals y over x. So with inverse, when we're finding k, we have x times y. So your proportion, or how are you going to set it up to find the missing value, is going to be x times y equals x times y. So if we look at number 7, we have 4 times 12 equals 3 times y. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to have 48 equals 3y. So we're, our final answer, we think, is going to be 16. So that is how you solve for those missing values. Let's look at number 10. So now I have an x that's missing. So I'm going to have x times negative 6 equals negative 3 times negative 4. x times negative 6 is negative 6x equals positive 12. So we're going to get that that missing value is negative 2. And now how you're going to check it is if you plug it back in, let's see, we think that this first point is negative 2, negative 6. So if I'm trying to find k, negative 2 times negative 6 is 12. And then for the second point, we have negative 3 times negative 4, which is also 12. So k is going to be 12. Those points are the same, or those uh, constants are the same. Now, number 11 and number 12 are very similar. Um, just think of the comma as separating the two points. So this first point is 3 comma y, and the second point is 5 comma 12, if you want to rewrite it. So we're going to have 3 times y equals 5 times 12. So we're going to have 3y equals 60, and then 60 divided by 3, we're trying to get y by itself. 60 divided by 3 is 20. So we think that y equals 20. So that's how you find those missing values.